Hey guys, Mike Noel here. Uh, it must be Wednesday. It must be 11 o'clock Pacific time uh, because we're about to waste another perfectly good hour talking about all things blockchain on, on Blockchain Weekly. Um, and wow. Yeah, you know, I, I it, it is, it's crazy. I keep on seeing this, you know, just, you know, Things are getting crazy, and I don't think they can get any crazier. I, I've said that every week. I think for the last thirty-one weeks, um, and it just on it just keeps getting crazier. This last week in blockchain has been uh, has been uh, been crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, Memorial weekend, I was in San Jose. Uh, shout out to Chandler Gao, uh, the Crypto Valley there in Los Gatos, and uh, which is just north of San Jose great um uh great meeting and they're setting up an innovation center in newark um great meeting great people out there great opportunities a uh, shout out to chris um storecoin s-t-o-r dot c-o-i-n uh this is one to one to watch storecoin um reach out to chris and, and talk to him he's got some really interesting really interesting stuff going on and an interesting look at consensus um and the way that he's doing consensus that, that's another one to watch you know uh, those of you that have, have been on blockchain weekly watch this for any time at all know that uh um we we've uh, we predicted some pretty good things uh, you know the bottom of ethereum um we were in oh uh we started talking about uh, dental coin uh, early on, we'll be talking about dental coin a, a little later on and a couple of other things. But let's dive right into the news because, uh, you know, by the way, you're going to want to hang on. This is going to be a stellar blockchain weekly. We have um, uh, we have uh, some people from a diversity in blockchain. And I say people, I mean women, but, um, uh, you know, people from diversity in blockchain. And they are doing some awesome, awesome work. Um and, and it's going to be an interesting conversation. I will guarantee that. Uh, first of all, down to the news. Let's get the uh, first segment out of the way really quick so we can get on to uh, uh, the diversity in blockchain. Uh, New England, uh, Bank of New England issues working paper on central bank digital currencies. So this is something that um, relatively recent. Um, uh, we have seen different governments uh, kind of come into uh, blockchain, into cryptos, and then out with the Chinese government and things of this nature. But on May 18th, that's just you know a couple, couple of days ago, Bank of England released a staff working paper laying out various scenarios of possible risk and financial stability issues of the Central Bank of Digital Currencies. The Central Bank of Digital Currencies. This is happening, guys. Uh, the paper constructed three models of the CBDC, depending on the sectors that have access to the CBDC, from narrow CBDC to where access is limited to banks and non-bank financial institutions to direct and in indirect access extended to households and non-financial firms. Um, the whole, uh, this is on Cointelegraph, by the way. Um, we're beginning to get, get uh, governments involved in a, in a positive manner, I think, here. Uh, China, China, of course. China's brick-and-mortar state bank looks to Alipay for help to embrace fintech. If uh, you're not familiar with China, if you're not, uh, what is it, WeChat and Alipay? I mean, this this is the uh, this is the the financial sector in China that everyone uses WePay. Everyone uses Alipay, and now um, the uh, brick and mortar state banks in China are looking to Alipay to help embrace fintech, uh, cloud computing, and cryptos. Um, this is huge. This is huge. Um, lots of things going on there. They're just announcing it, uh, and, and I think we should should watch that. Um, this is um, just in from CoinDesk. There's a thing called syndicated loans. A lot of people may not loan, uh, know about these, but syndicated loans are are big, massive financial transactions where multiple people are involved. Multiple people give uh, 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 contribute to the loan. Uh, that when the payback comes in, there's people that get different amounts of money, very complicated. Uh, there's a group that is called uh, I -H -I -H -S Market, M-A-R-K-I-T, that facilitates these types of loans. And it works as an underwriter and um, 
uh, and kind of manages these loans, make sure everyone gets paid. Um, they have a plan to tokenize a $1 trillion loan market. So they're looking to blockchain and they're looking to tokenize uh, the market of syndicated loans. Um, wow, this is, this is massive. It's becoming mainstream. Um, we talked a little bit at the, at the very beginning about uh, Dent, uh, Dentacoin. You should look at Dentacoin. Um, uh, AB Newswire, this is uh, posted this morning, I think. Uh, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, number one dentist begins accepting cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dentacoin. So uh, they're beginning to um, uh, take uh, to, uh, to, to look at uh, Dentacoin as an opportunity. And it, this is a shine office. Uh, the, the, these are big organizations. Um, the, she's one of the first to actually accept Dentacoin. Uh, look at Dentacoin and some of the things that are happening. Uh, May 30th, we're happy to bring you good news that Dentacoin's network is growing further and further. So they're, they're continuing to add new dentists to Dentacoin. Um, oh, this is interesting. This is really cool. Um, SEC obtained yeah, some of the SEC uh, news about ICOs and things. We're going to move fast, fast, fast because we need to get on to uh, Shauna. Uh, the SEC obtains emergency order halting fraudulent coin offering scheme. So the S uh, Security Exchange Commission is becoming more active and more proactive in looking at some of the bad actors that are doing ICOs and they're going in and actually stopping them uh, mid-track. The Securities and Exchange Commission today announced it has obtained a court order halting an ongoing fraud involving an initial coin offering that raised as much as $21 million from investors inside and outside the U.S. The court also approved an emergency asset freeze uh, at the appointment of a receiver for Titanium Blockchain Infrastructure Services, the firm behind the alleged scheme. So uh, please, uh, you know, let's, let's play nice in this. Let's make sure that um, uh, blockchain is moving forward. Um, let's make sure that some of these bad actors aren't as active as they used to. Oh, and uh, this is cool. I love this. Uh, the SEC has now launched a fake ICO website to educate investors. Uh, I'm going to repeat that. Uh, the SEC has just launched a fake ICO website to educate investors. This is this is hilarious. Um, uh, it's called Howie Coins, um, and it and uh, it. Let's see what the website is, HowieCoins.com, H-O-W-E-Y-C-O-I-N-S.com. And uh, if you try and invest and hit the button to invest, it takes you to an SEC page. And uh, they're going to try and do some. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> they're going to try and do some uh, some educational process about uh uh, you know, how to invest and what to invest and what to look forward to. Um, you know, I, I you, you go to HowieCoins.com, look at it. This is this is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, stay tuned. Um, once in, we will provide expert timing advice to make sure that Tier 1 and Unlimited offer Tier 2 participants maximize immediate gains with a pre planned pump <laughs> to occur shortly after the pre-ICO phase ends. Our past two pumps have doubled the value for the period immediately after the pump for returns of over 225%. Uh, this is uh, HowieCoins.com. It's a fake site uh, uh, by the SEC. Um, and if you try and you should go there and try and um, uh, uh, look at their white paper and, and invest in the token sale, click on invest in the token sale and the SEC will come in and try and educate you. Great stuff that's happening. I love this stuff. What a wonderful world we live in today. A um, couple of events coming up um, other than Blockchain Weekly every single week, Wednesday, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, right here at uh, blockchainweekly.io. Other than that, we have some other events that are taking place. Uh, Mobile Growth Network 2018 uh, is June 7th, uh, and that's in New York. Um, that is New York City Pali Center for the Media. That is Mobile Growth New York. Lots of things happening in blockchain uh, at that event. Uh, the Autonomous Vehicle Summit um, is at the Cowell Theater and Fort Mason Center in San Francisco, uh, June 14. Uh, Autonomous Vehicle Summit. A lot of you guys know that uh, uh, the blockchain is, is becoming instrumental in that. And uh, kind of uh, uh, going along with the topic of today, diversity in, in uh, blockchain, the Women in Technology Summit 
is the, uh, the this is the 24th annual Women in Technology Conference in San Jose, June 10th, 11th, and 12th of this year. Uh, interesting events to take place and to, to look at doing. Um, ICOs, ICOs are so 2017. Now there's a new term to fundraise with cryptocurrencies, the STO. I think we're coming into a different, um, oh, 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 moving along. Okay, yeah, I got to go. I got to get going. We got to get Susan up here. Uh, so let's get Shauna up. Lots of things happening in blockchain today, but um, we have the most important one that's just about to come on. Shauna, can you hear me? I can. Are you there? I am. Yeah, can I you can hear, hear me? You. Yes, okay, I go can. ahead. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Thank you for How having you? us today. I am wonderful, and I am joined by Susan and Anna and Michelle and Josh. So I'm excited to get them up on stage also here with us. Yes, and uh, I, I think Susan has a hard stop, so we need to get her up first. But first of yep. all, I want to talk to a little bit about, not about diversity in blockchain, but about you, how you got involved in blockchain and and, and, and that kind of stuff. And I'm throwing you, I, and I know I'm throwing you a, a curveball there, but I'm, I'm sure you can handle it. I have confidence. Oh, goodness. Well, okay, so my forte into blockchain, um, of course it was a lot of the Bitcoin curiosity, a couple of years ago, um, but I really didn't get fully, I would say obsessed with it until I was on stage. Um, <laughs> and I was in St. Petersburg, Russia, and the prime minister had chosen me and uh, quite a few other really good people to be on stage. And I was of course focusing on Watson and AI and speaking to about 4,500 attorneys that he had brought in to learn more about advanced technology. And um, I have sitting next to me, one of the professors that is one of my favorite blockchain professors in the world, Paolo Tosca. And after his 15 minute speech, I could not get enough. And so I went home and I read everything that I could and just really dove into it and really understood that it was so much more than just cryptocurrency. What we have is a, a possible new fabric for the entire world to our, for our financial system and everything that we do. It really gets us back to you know 3000 years ago when we were bartering. And so it's very exciting for me to be a part of this. And um, it was a lot of fun to really get to get, get to know those professors. John Ford um, from Australia was with us. Of course, Paula Tosca from London. And we've got you know quite a few others that I've got to know throughout the past few years that I've uh, dove in. And I would definitely say it's much more than just liking it. I'm definitely obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I, I, you know, we at Blockchain Weekly, we call that the, um, uh, uh, the blockchain virus that you were infected with. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. Myself, uh, you know, I woke up three months later, I was in the gutter, I hadn't slept, um, uh, you know, and, it, and, and it just took a, a video from Vitalik to, to really set me off. I'd already been mining for a while, you know, uh, and then the, 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 the Vitalik came on board and was like, oh, this, this changes everything. And a lot of people have had that, that, uh, that same type of experience. And I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're with us. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, diversity in blockchain and what you guys are doing. Absolutely. So I would, would you mind if we brought Susan up? I know she only has about 10 minutes Mike. left. Susan Mike. is our executive director of diversity in blockchain. And there are, um, we, we of course have our base of founders, which we're gonna hear from today. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that everyone got an opportunity to hear from Susan and she can give us a quick update on kind of how we founded uh, diversity in blockchain and where we're at today, and we've got a huge event going on uh, on June 4th that I know we'll share with you a little bit uh, further about. Oh, oh, oh. Greetings. Hi. Susan. Great to oh, be okay. here. You're, you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having us. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I mean, I, I am I'm excited. This is this is really good stuff. Um, so. Uh, uh, Susan, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, who you are in the organization, and then you know, let's dive into the organization and and learn ab about the our organization. Does that sound? Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. So I am currently the executive director of the organization, but I'm on equal footing with each of my co-founders. We are all significantly putting in um, a lot of hours to make this move forward because we all passionately believe in the mission of this. Uh, we all, uh, well, a good part of us met at a panel at MIT in October on blockchain and AI. 
And at the end of the panel, the people leading it from MIT asked us literally to form a group to please save them from themselves. And uh, we, we, that was the direct quote. So we Perfect. kicked the idea around a while and we came to the conclusion that um, our panel was actually women in blockchain and AI. And we came to the conclusion that really diversity is not being met at the moment in the industry and has a strong, uh, there's a strong opportunity to meet that. So we agreed to keep that focus on that. And uh, that's how we've been putting ourselves together to move forward. Um, we do have a huge event on Monday. We are partnering, and I'm going to read to you the way that this is partnered because there's a specific set of language that we must use when partnering with this, but we are partnering with a group called Blockchain for Impact, which is a community initiative of the Blockchain Commission for the Sustainable Development, a multi-sectoral supporting group supporting the United Nations system along with member states, intergovernmental inter organizations, the private sector, and civil society. And we're going to lead best practices for diversity in the blockchain industry. So what's happening is their first summit, and there's a proxy, they're oversubscribed, which is pretty awesome. They have a close to 400 in attendance, and uh, it is a mix of uh, large corporations, startups, government, NGOs, et cetera, many different entities who are attending, who are very interested in the subject of blockchain for impact. And they are forming certain sub subcommittees to address different subjects. And we will be leading the conversation surrounding diversity as it affects these subcommittees in a kind of a charge to go forward and account for diversity when you are forming groups or are in groups. So that that's our, our big news and our, our very exciting news. Yeah, yeah I think that, I think that's phenomenal, actually. Um, yeah, uh, you know, there's there's this thing called decentralization, right? Um, and we're, we're, we're using uh, decentralized mechanisms and um, we find that they work much better in decentralized organizations, right? So it's it's good for me to hear that you're uh, you have uh, an organization there that that runs in a decentralized manner, right? You've told me that everyone is is involved and everyone's active. Um, that excites me to no end. Uh, and then to hear that you know there's diversity and there's other people that are becoming involved, and you're doing education because education is going to help adoption uh, as this thing begins to roll out. Um, and and uh, everyone, more people begin to get on the train as it begins to run. So this is this is just awesome, awesome stuff. And the the caliber and uh, uh, the caliber of individuals that you have put on the board and on this group, um, Shauna and Susan, is just absolutely stellar. And my my hat is off to you. And and thanks so much for doing what you're doing. And please don't quit. Please keep it up. And if anything, <laughs> please kind of kind of turn the turn the gas up a little bit. You know what I mean? Because um, yeah, you know, we all need this and we all need this uh, sooner rather than later. You know what I mean? Um, but, well, and I'm, go ahead. I'm going to mention one thing. So I've seen a whole industry change by just a very few of us. And I think one of my favorite quotes is that 2% of the world can change the entire world. And oh. we are that percent, hopefully lassoing the rest of the world to join us. We have got an opportunity right now because we have literally an entire industry in infancy. So we can, we have the opportunity to really change the world from the beginning. And um, I saw this on one of the areas that I practiced in before going to IBM is called uh, e-discovery. And I will promise you, I was the only woman who attended most of these conferences. And I went to a conference every year and there was about 10,000 guys and me. And I would get invited to some of the things I really didn't want to get invited to. And um, finally, I kind of got fed up and I said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to educate a whole bunch of women and then they'll have no choice but to then have other options besides me to put on panels and invite to these conferences. Well, I didn't realize so many women would be interested. Um, so about 11 years ago, I put out an email and invited whoever wanted to come in Washington, D.C. to um, join me to learn about this new practice area. Over 50 women attended. By the end of the year, I had an organization of 2,000 women now it sits at about 5,000 women worldwide with 30 chapters. We educate women every month on emerging technologies from e-discovery to artificial intelligence, 
blockchain and now, of course, um, jumping into quantum computing. But I've seen an entire industry change. We have a lot of women now. Um, and of course, that was my focus then. And now we're getting a little more into diversity because it's so important here um, for blockchain. But um, I've seen an entire industry change and it can. But I think that what one of the things we have to do is we have to be purposefully inclusive. And um, we at IBM and, and um, you know, I won't speak for IBM because I have to be cautious not to do that. But, you know, one of the things that we always try to do is to make sure we diversify our groups. And I think so often um, we don't realize we're not diversifying if we don't stand back and actually think it through. And what we're missing is not even just diversifying from race and gender and sexual orientation. We're missing diversity of thought. And that is so important for blockchain. Tremendously important for AI, especially as AI is the training of the people for the future that the system will be using for the future. So, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of mention those few things. But, you know, I think that even beyond just it's cool to do a diversity group, it is absolutely needed because we won't become the society that we want in the future without diversifying ourselves now. Well put. Uh, absolutely yeah, well put. Sorry, I don't mean to over talk, but I actually do have to leave in about two minutes. But I, I just okay. want to second. I'm sorry about that. Um, I do have um, I do need to second that really strongly, because when you think about what blockchain is, it's really an architecture or a protocol layer upon which apps are going to sit. And if you are, you are what you make. Right. So if you are creating technology with one point of view, then you're going to result, get a result with one point of view. And yet that technology needs to serve many points of view. So if you have many points of view coming in at the fundamental layer to build it, you're going to have a stronger technology to serve that layer upon it, which will be the apps which then serve an even more diverse population. So it's pretty critical to get it right now so we get it right later. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's, I think it's, you know, I, I think you guys, you might have understated the, the the necessity of what you guys are doing here. I mean, it's not just an application layer. It's not just an industry that's changing. Yeah, it is uh, industries across the board that will be affected. Medical, uh, the logistics, distribution. I, I mean, it goes agriculture. I mean, every every industry is going to be affected by this uh a new way of thinking that works a thousand times quicker and a hundred times less expensive. And as we begin to branch this out, we, we need to start thinking about decentralization of thought, centralization of organizations and, and bringing um, uh, more people into the fold uh, with different ideas and different ideologies. This is the way it's going to succeed. If we don't, then we're just going to have the same thing that we've had before. And who wants that? Not me. And anyone <laughs> really here? No, no one. <laughs> well, so I think I, we all want you. And you guys, and are, will, you guys are. Sorry, sorry. I know I keep jumping in, but I'm watching the clock, and I I can't be late for my my two thirty. Um, not that this isn't equally valuable because it is. I don't mean to do that. Um, but I think it's really you're serving every industry. But the thing that's really interesting about this right now is that there's huge opportunity for everybody to learn. There's zero barrier. There's, what you need is curiosity and access. And that's something that we hope to provide. And so it's anybody's game and it's everybody's game. And our view is everybody who would like to be involved should be involved. Yeah. Very good. And and, um, okay, I'm going to jump I, off now. It was great. I am so sorry to have to do this to you, but it was great. I'm nice to meet you. Great, great, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, Mike, I think we're going to bring someone else up. Um, while you do that, I just want to go back to, there's a couple of questions here about uh, the SEC that we started off on the top of the hour. Um, and yes, that uh, the website, the SEC reference is, uh, a website is a reference to the Howey test, uh, and it's spelled the same way. So there's that. Um, hi there. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. Good, good. Thank you. This is exciting. Very so exciting. Introduce is this Susan Anna? Is it Ashrov? Um, Anna Ashrov. But you Anna got it Ashrov. almost. Okay, I got it almost. Was I close? Very close. Thank you. Okay, very good. And um, you are with Goldman Sachs, and of course, no one has ever heard of Goldman Sachs. No. Um, 
Uh, no, no, no. And uh, you are here today with the, uh, the diversity in blockchain. Can you tell us a little bit about, how, you know, really quickly, how you came across uh, blockchain? I mean, what was what was the thing that set it off for you? What? Are, why are you interested? And where's your where's your passion here? Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah, totally. And I'm actually glad you read out some news earlier because. Um, the whole combination of IHS Marquee is very interesting. I've always been in the syndicated loan space. That's kind of what my background is. And so I've always been on the investment banking. Um, I've always been in leveraged finance, managed loans, um, did a bunch of restructuring and reorganization for um, companies during the credit crisis. Um, and so I, you know, mostly in my career I've covered big industries, so financial institutions as well as technology. And Blockchain essentially is a combination of both, right? So um, 2014 or 15, got very interested in, in Bitcoin and, and blockchain. Um, I didn't really, you know, I probably should say that, you know, my family has sort of been the early investors in the Bitcoin back in the days. Uh, but I really got to understand the technology um, mainly from just my investment banking seat. And you know, sort of in 2015, 2016, realized that this huge, you know, syndicated loans market, how can we make this more interesting? Can we potentially revolutionize it, right, with blockchain? And that's what got me interested. Um, I haven't done any direct work in, um, you know, implementing blockchain to improve efficiencies and reduce costs in the syndicated loan space, but that's kind of what got me into it. Yeah, that's... Uh, um that is a mess, right? That that is a rat's nest. Uh, 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 the syndicated loan space, trying to keep track of who's who, who owns what, and and exactly. and they change. From, they change. They're changing constantly. Uh, you know what? You know, oh, we got a payment in. Where does this go? You know, there's interest. You know, blah blah. blah. There's all kinds of stuff that need to be, and it's uh, it is a nightmare. And uh, I thought that was interesting. And, and thanks for sharing that with us. So um, diversity in blockchain. We have. A, um, can I can I do a question from the audience? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Is there an opportunity? So this is an opportunity, guys, for a shameless plug, by the way. Uh, is there an opportunity for people who are first learning about this to get involved? What are your criteria for involvement? Um, and let's talk again. Uh, yeah, this is John Crockett. There we go. Uh, and what is your criteria? And talk again a little bit because we've had a couple of people come on the line. Talk a little bit about the event that, that you have coming up, I think, next week, right? Yes, absolutely. So there's absolutely no criteria for getting involved, right? You need to have curiosity, as Susan Joseph mentioned. So to the extent you have curiosity, we'll provide you with access. Um, we, you know, you can access us via diversityinblockchain.com. Fill out the form. We're happy to reach out. Um, unfortunately, I think the UN event, um, the, the event that is happening on Monday, is by invitation and the registration is full. But we are planning a number of other events this year and would love for, for everyone to sort of join in and, 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 you know, get involved. So what's the, is there a website? How do we, how do we understand what those are? Yes, there is a website, diversityinblockchain.com. Very simple. There's a form that um, potential prospective interested parties can fill out. We'll get that information and we'll reach out. Um, you can also, you know, link us up on LinkedIn or, or message us or, you know, Twitter. We're all on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, all over the social media. So um, there's plenty of avenues to get involved. We'd love to hear from everyone. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, I, I want to answer, I want to pop up another question here. And uh, uh, Shauna, I want to get you involved in on this one. Uh, publish... So what are the biggest existing challenges that prevent more women to get involved in blockchain? There you go. You know, I did answer this one yesterday, although I would love to, I was at an interview yesterday and this was one of the questions that had come up. And honestly, I think that we have diverse populations and, um, you know, I'll take even single mothers. So if we start to look at how risk averse certain people can be in their situations, Typically, um, those who are risk adverse uh, and in situations where they can't jump into something that's a little more emerging technology, um, it's that is their barrier of entry. And so one of the things we're doing here uh, with diversity and blockchain is providing education components for them so they don't have that barrier of entry. They can start to learn and then enter the industry 
um, once it gets a little bit more comfortable for them um, in the area. So, you know, I think that that's probably the initial forte um, that I think is holding women back, but there's definitely other, um, other issues and some of it is just awareness. You know, this is an area a lot of women are in. That's one of the reasons why we have so many women on our board and founders is because we want to be those leaders that other women can look up to and go, okay, hey, it's safe. This is a place you can enter and you can grow and you can increase your career. So Anna, what do you think? I agree 100%, right? So the whole purpose for our organization is to provide access, right? Not necessarily to just women, to everyone, to everyone who's interested, who may not necessarily have the technological background, right? Um, as Shauna mentioned, this is a new industry and we're all new to it. So there's this opportunity for everyone without any minimum knowledge to just come in and reinvent themselves. And I think that's actually what we are doing too. All of the co-founders are essentially re reinventing ourselves from our you know, careers that we've previously had and hopefully taking that and, and building on to something new and exciting. If you're gonna do a pivot, uh, I mean, blockchain's a pretty good one. And, and, and you said something interesting. Um, uh, you said um, uh, how you can get involved, not, not even if, if you're not in technology that you can get involved. I mean, that's an interesting statement. It's very true, but I, I don't think a, a, a lot of people really understand that. Can you, can you, can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, what are the, what are some of the opportunities that are not, everyone thinks blockchain, it's technology. There's a bunch of geeks walking around with glasses and they look like, uh, well, never mind. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, what, what are, what are some of the things that, that uh, uh, is not geek related that you're that you're seeing. What are some of the opportunities that people can get involved in? Shawnee, you want to take that, or is that for me? I, it it can be. I, so, uh, so I guess it would depend on so employment opportunities. There are starting to be more and more out there. I think one of the things that we're all keeping up to date on is what's out there, what's available. What opportunities are there for um, other women and other people in diverse populations to apply for those jobs? You know, the nice thing about it that is everyone, as Anna had said, is kind of on the playing field. It is new. It's an infancy. It's an opportunity to jump in from the ground up. Um, you know, I think that if we look at that as the opportunities. Now, with the diversity in blockchain, oh my goodness, you really, I mean, we need help with marketing. We need help with you know, business development. I mean, there's so many things that we can do to really engage others. Um, I love the geeks because I work with all of the geeks um, and IBM, of course, is full of them and I'm one just masquerading in blonde hair. Um, but as we start to kind of um, want to grow the industry, we need to have those extroverts, those people who want to evangelize blockchain so that we can bring the rest of the world into it with us. So what do you think? And I think yeah, I totally agree. And I think the essence of the whole blockchain premise is the fact that it's decentralized technology, right? So to the extent you know anything about intermediaries or any industry out there that has an intermediary, um, you can essentially come in and be, you know, a blockchain expert and, and sort of, you know, think of ways on how to use blockchain to disintermediate that intermediary, right? How can you apply decentralized technology to other industries, healthcare, um, you know, drugs, right? Counterfeit drugs and, uh, you know, shoemaking and ownership and identity. Um, and with diversity in blockchain specifically, we, as Shauna said, we need, we need all the help we can get. Uh, media content, um, ideas, um, you know, event planning, <laughs> um, anything you can name. Yeah, absolutely. I would say one of our most recent volunteers is someone who's been on the Today Show. So Hannah, Hannah, um, Hannah Weiss. Yep. So it's Shout out to Hannah. Yeah, hey Hannah. So she's been tremendous <laughs> and she's learning blockchain and really has jumped in head in. And I think she's obsessed now too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and those are very good points, but from a, a, a from the standpoint of someone who's actually um, rationalizing workflows, working in blockchain and things of this nature, this is completely different. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, it used to be that the geeks world, the war world, you know, when we had the internet, we had marketing, we had websites, these are all a bunch of geeks, you know, that we're telling businesses, this is what you have to do, you have to come this way. Um, and then, and we eventually pulled them our way. This is something completely different uh, in blockchain implementations. You have to have that geek in the room, but you have to have someone that understands the business model, understands the workflows, 
you have to have someone that's an ERP specialist in the enterprise. Uh, you have to have a marketing specialist, and, and they have to be able to communicate with the geeks. So it's a uh, it's a different headset, it's a different mindset, and it's more inclusive. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see the way this thing uh, runs out. And thanks to you, people. I mean, you're you're really you're really doing some good work here, and I want you to keep it up, Alex. I want to thank you. We're going to get. I, I believe we're going to move uh, to the next segment. We've got. Um, uh, we have a video question request. Let's do that first. Well, all right, we're going to leave you up. We have a video question first. This will be interesting. Hi there. Can I hear? No, we can't. We cannot. Oh, yep. Can now I can. Now? Yeah, now, now I can. can now we can. I was yes, expecting this video. I'm so amused by this whole setup. Um, this is a really great conversation, ladies. Thanks for um, doing this. So I actually, quick question. I want to know how I can get involved with the diversity in blockchain. You were saying you need support in kind of any capacity. Is there someone I can contact directly or should I do it through the website? Yes. Sure. Absolutely. That's, my, that's my question. <laughs> yeah, go to the website and sign up. So it's diversityinblockchain.com. Okay. And there's a right. button that's or you know go where it says join and then please join and we will remember your name <laughs> and we will write you yeah. and we would love so thank you yeah no problem okay cool that was it thank you awesome thank, thank you. you so um uh, interesting um uh, environment that shindig provides um and thanks to mike mccocklis and anyone that wants to uh, have an additional question like that please uh, raise your hand and go yes shana the other two co-founders we don't want to forget them yeah i i think we're after this will be uh, uh we're going to take anna off uh we only have four pods but we want to bring up the two anna uh the two attorneys and, and thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for all that you're doing and thank you so much for the help keep up the good work and let's uh you know education is going to spur adoption we need more not less thank you thanks for having us mike you bet so mike uh, go ahead and bring that up. Uh, did I have more questions here? I'm sure I do. Um, uh, that's, uh, okay, well, all right, here we go. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. It's good. And this is, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves, and, and, and first of all, tell us who you are, and then tell us a little bit about how you got into blockchain and how that happened. What, what, was, your, what was your first impressions, and, and um, you know, how did that all happen? Does that make sense? Sure. Go, go, Absolutely. go. Okay. By the way, first I need to apologize. I'm on my phone, so if you see me wiggling around, that's what that is. Uh, my name is Josh Clayman. I co-chair the Blockchain and Smart Contracts Group at Morrison & Forrester, which I co-founded. Um, I also chair the the legal working group of the Wall Street Blockchain Alliance. Uh, how I got into blockchain was this, and I'm kind of embarrassed when I say this. I got into it out of defensiveness and a little bit of fear, actually, because I had been for many years a transactional lawyer. Um, working on leveraged finance matters, loan documents, credit agreements, et cetera. Um, and I started hearing about banks a few years ago beginning to look into smart contracts and that they had actual internal incubators within the banks that were, were working on these things. And what I also heard was that these things called smart contracts were going to actually be used to reduce legal spend. So I thought, er, <laughs> what is this? I need to understand it. Um, and as I started looking into what is a smart contract, of course, then I learned about well, what is a blockchain. And then from blockchain, I thought, okay, well, how did blockchain come about? So that led me into crypto. And along the way, along with one of my colleagues named Steve Leiberg, I started our group at our firm. Um, and now there are over 70 lawyers around the world in that group. But that's really how I got into it, which was really saying, how do I make sure that I understand this so we don't become obsolete? Perfect, 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 perfect. And how about you? 
Sure. So I'm Michelle Gitlitz, and um, I'm also a lawyer, and I co-chair the blockchain and digital currency uh, group at Blank Rome. Um, I was actually at a at a cocktail party, and a bunch of people about a year and a half ago, and a bunch of people were talking about blockchain and crypto, and I I really didn't know what they were talking about, so I very politely um, smiled and shook my head and went home and started reading up on it and read um, the Satoshi White Paper, and I just thought, this is really revolutionary, and for somebody who, you know, I went to college and I got an email address and had to use the computer in the library, and they told me that my email at Cornell would, would land it somehow with, and my friend's computer at the University of Michigan. It was sort of unbelievable to me, and it, I had that same thought when I started reading about blockchain, um, and I just kind of went down the rabbit hole. The, the one thing I do want to say, and, and you had asked earlier, Mike, and I think it's really important, is you don't have to have a love of or even a great understanding of technology. You can really understand the fundamentals of blockchain and, and, and say, hey, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a coder, I'm a marketer, I'm a lawyer, um, I'm a communications person, I'm in PR, but, but all of these industries will need people who have just a basic understanding and a basic desire to work in this space. And so oftentimes I have a client who, you know, I don't really need to know anything about blockchain to help them, but they like and they think that I add value because I do understand what it is. And so if you want to get into this, if you want to get into this field, you shouldn't think, well, I need to be a developer, or I need to be a coder, um, or I need to have this, you know, plethora of understanding. You just have to have a desire. I, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, the, the innovation that's happening is incredible. Um, STOs. Uh, I mean, we've gone we've gone from ICO to ISO to STOs now. Um, as as we try to get the lo the, the legal things straight, um, and please feel free to uh, comment on any of that because uh, I'm in the industry and I still don't understand a, a lot of the uh, legal ramifications of the Howey test and and how this is all coming down. But uh, you know, once we start moving into this, and I'm sure we're going to get to a point where. Uh, you know, the SEC and we have some sort of consensus on how we can do uh, fundraising for new enterprises and things of this nature, if it's an STO or whatever it is, I mean, uh, it, it's going to be the new Kickstarter, it's going to be the new uh, the, the new way to, to do this, and it's going to fund uh, companies that are doing interesting things um, in loans, in, in loan processing, in and so we need people that understand the mortgage business in order to understand how to how to communicate and how to talk back and forth. But also we need people that understand the loan business and understand the technology so the end users can do it and we can do implementations. And and, and, and there's all kinds of things that are going to be uh, be necessary. And it's just going to be, I mean, it's, wow, there's going to be a lot of work for a lot of people uh, here very, very quickly. Uh, I want to just really quickly um, publish a, um, uh, let me publish this real quick. This is from Carrie Thompson. I'm in Arizona. I'm an attorney. I would love to help in any way. Signed up the DIB site. Great content all. Thanks so much. So, um, that's just a, a message from Carrie Thompson. Maybe some validation. I don't know about you, but I always need validation. Uh, I, I need the validation so much. Uh, my wife is challenged, I'll tell you. But anyway, um, there's there's some validation for you guys a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, an attorney here in Arizona that really um, uh, is is backing you and understands what you're doing. Um, so um, I, I want to, you know, I have to, I want to ask this question, and I'm probably going to need to publish it a couple of different times. What's the best way to approach communities who have no exposure to blockchain? due to lack of access. In other words, what's the pitch to those yet to understand, that's the pitch, yet, yet to understand why they should be interested? I think we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but maybe we can dive deeper. And I'm just going to open that up and anyone, just feel free to, to jump in there. And I know you guys are attorneys and you know how to do that. So go, go, go. I'm happy. I'm happy to take the first. I think the first stab. Um, 
Go ahead. I think it's about recognizing a, a technological revolution. And it would be like saying, I don't care about about Netscape when Netscape came out and we were using that to search, or it would be like, I don't care about you know email. Um, it's going to take some time for everybody to understand the full impact, but um, you know, just be curious about things. Want to understand? You don't have to. You don't have to believe it, um, but it's always good to have knowledge. What do you think, Josh? So I agree with you. I also think. I mean. One of the things that is so interesting about this space is you can say blockchain is a database, right? A distributed database. But then why are people getting so excited about a database? Then the, I think maybe one of the things that I would emphasize to people who don't have access is it's not about the database. You know, this is a whole movement towards decentralization, to flattening of certain hierarchies, to, you know, potentially having more seats at more tables so that people who traditionally may have been have less opportunities can get involved um, on an economic and social basis. It's a way for people who haven't historically had identities of their own that they had control of to get involved. So I think there's a lot of stuff. I mean, the blockchain, the movement towards blockchain isn't happening in a vacuum. We're also seeing, you know, the rise of the sharing economy um, and things like that. So to me, I would probably try and get people involved and excited by pointing to uh, to possibilities and not necessarily to the nuts and bolts, bolts of the technology or to the, you know, the regulations if they're not a lawyer. You're just getting them excited about possibilities, as Michelle said. Shauna? Well, so I've been trying to explain blockchain to quite a few people in my community. And uh, lately it's been to community. And I think the, the best thing that I've been able to explain it is something we all use every day. So it's, it's a fruit. But take any piece of paper, let's say for example, an apple. And on the table, there's a typically that apple take this word came from the word store. We can take that exact same barcode on that apple and with blockchain to it all the way back to the farm. So we know when it went to farm to how many trucks and how many ships, sure it actually came from all the way to the people. Now, why that's important to them is because we can make the group we call that expect everything to ever. We need to know that when you pull that apple out of your fridge, that that apple actually was on the cargo ship that was contaminated and you should not eat that apple. We will blockchain empowers that and we'll the society moving forward to know exactly where our food came from. So that affects everyone. It seems to be seems to be I, I guess seems to help under people understand be interested in and uh, absolutely and um we talked a little bit last uh, last week about uh, a tuna that had been caught in Fuji, uh, and they tracked it uh, uh, completely from the from the boat that it was on into um, uh, into um, uh, you know the stores. So we the, you understand you know we had a we had some lettuce that went bad and uh, here not too long ago that was grown in Arizona and that was distributed throughout the uh, the United States and. We had this big recall and all this lettuce came back. It was not just the lettuce that was affected. If we had, um, you know, the internet of things and we had uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, if we had the blockchain, we'd be able to track where that farm came from. We'd be able to track the distributions and bring it back. But more importantly is right now we've just made the recalls. And so now we, we have a question, how did that happen? What went wrong in the system, right? How did, how did this all happen? Um, and we don't have any answers. If we had blockchain and we had all this traffic, all this uh, data that we had in the, the analytics, we could actually track where it came from and, and what, and, and from there be able to understand why it happened and be more laser focused in improving the uh, uh, the food chain and making life. Uh, bless you, by the way. I, I'm I've got the same thing. I've got the little tickle in my throat, and I'm trying to I'm trying to persevere without sneezing, without coughing, and. But uh, I can appreciate that. Bless you, by the way. So, um, but yeah, lo lots of different things happening here. Lots and lots and lots and lots of things happening here. Um, and I think this is a, a good use case. We've we've talked about 
um, uh, you know, a lot of things here. And I think that the takeaway is that there is uh, there's opportunity here for everyone. And it's not just necessarily for the geeks. And how do and, and um, uh, uh, you, you know, I, I think it was said, but, uh, I, you know, I want to reiterate it's it's the change that's coming. Um, and part of the process is being ready and being able to accept change. Sometimes that's the that's the most difficult part, right? Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I mean, I often say that we're at an inflection point in my view, right? And where there's a fundamental shift in the way we're relating to one another, the way business is done, etc. And so I just think it's such a great opportunity because we're all in a sense beginners. Like no one's been doing this for 30 years. There are no real experts yet um, across the board in all different industries involving blockchain. And I don't know, I think it's just such an exciting time. And I think that's why diversity in blockchain now, especially is so important because we all have a chance to get involved. Like the barriers haven't yet been set and, and made uh, firm, right? We can all take advantage of this shift. Uh, absolutely. and. The timing on that is now, not tomorrow. So it's time to get involved. It's time to start changing the mindset, start looking at change. Um, I have a little thing I want to pull up here. This is from Nicola Barazzi in uh, Chao from Italy. Uh, I organized a Bitcoin a Venezuela meetup. If someone wants to speak at our monthly events, uh, plus or minus 300 attendees, just reach out. For others, whenever you visit Venice, please ping me. So. <laughs> There you go. I, I want to put his name back up again. So in case anyone's going to be in Italy, uh, you can reach out to him. Uh, Bitcoin Venezuela, that probably is not a bad gig. Um, sounds like uh, sounds like uh, the kind of gigs that I that I want to have more of, definitely. So there you go. I want to go through the questions really quick. Just make sure we have everyone that has had questions. And we're, I mean, it's it is quickly becoming the top of the hour. And, and Shauna, I don't know about you, but this... This is always the quickest hour of my week. It seems like uh, we just got started, right? It does. Definitely. Well, there's so much. I so appreciate the opportunity to be on with you for an hour. And thank you for all the updates that you've given us. I mean, I, I feel fortunate to have these amazing family that are helping lead the health and especially in this industry. But we need help. You know, we need your help. We need everyone who's participating today. Join us. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, and uh, here we are at the top of the hour. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to say it. Um, and I want to have you guys on again soon. I mean, uh, we, we, we've just barely scratched the surface. There's so much more to say here, and this is just such an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting topic, and it's, it's something that definitely deserves more attention that we've given it today. And a, and a deeper dive. So I want to I, I want to hold the door open to have you guys on again here really quickly. But um, I, I'm going to have to say it. Uh, uh, here it is. There we are. We've wasted another perfectly good hour talking about all things blockchain on Blockchain Weekly. Uh, wow, what a segment it has been. Um, I, I want to thank Diversity in Blockchain, Shauna, Alex, and, and uh, Susan, and Meg. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Michelle, oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. they're all they're all. Yes, I was afraid there was. Yeah, I was afraid more. there was going to be I was going to feel it, and I did. I'm very sorry. I apologize. But I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy days, um, and uh, you know, helping us in the blockchain understand a little more about what you guys are doing. Help us understand a little more about blockchain and help people understand a little bit more about how they can be become engaged and not be afraid of this thing called blockchain and the change that is coming. I really appreciate everything that you've done. Um, so I want to I want to thank every single one of you. I want to thank uh, uh, Diversity in Blockchain. We're going to have you on again. Um, I want to thank uh, Mike Michaelakis uh, and Shindig. Uh, by the way, I um, had a couple of comments about this unique uh, application, this unique environment. I did see some people begin to... Uh, uh, talk a little bit and chat a little bit uh, amongst themselves while we were on stage. That's one thing you can do in the shindig uh, uh, environment that you can't do other places. Uh, we had uh, a video uh, uh, question that came up. 
We had people raise their hands and had uh, had questions. This is quite the environment. So put your one of one of the things I'd ask you to do is put your thinking hat on for your next opportunity where you're having a meeting or something of that nature and and think about reaching out to Michael Michael Lacus and uh, Shindig and seeing uh, how they can be of assistance in helping you out with your next event. Michael, you want to come up on, on stage? Hey, guys. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much more of anyone's time. I just want to thank everyone for taking part in this. Uh, we're happy to provide the platform for uh, these weekly events for Mike. We've been doing a ton for clients on ICOs and blockchain in general. So I think in this, in this sector, at least, uh, the need for engagement and a lot of Q&A as opposed to just doing a stand webinar is really important. And we're happy that people are, are looking at us um, for that kind of um, type of live event. It's a little bit different, um, but uh, I'm glad you guys all uh, were on. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to thank everyone for taking part. And sorry, Thanks, Michelle, guys. I had to take off. No. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next week.